One thing I want you to know about the seven day challenge is if you have eight days, if you have five days, just adjust this the way that you need. Don't just feel like you have to do day one. You might have to mix some of the days together. For every single one of these sessions, looking for at least one to two hours. And it might be adjust depending on your class and depending on you, you might even go up to like two and a half to three hours. I think going at least an hour is like the minimum that I would recommend for this kind of technique that I'm gonna take you through. And this is what I used to teach my students when I was a student in college. This is what I follow. Day number one, and this one's the hardest one because this is what I'm really bad at and what I do not like to do, but I think it's really, really important. So day number one is the plan and prepare. And what I mean by plan and prepare is you gotta plan out your sessions because if you don't plan it out, more likely than not, you're not gonna do it. You're gonna maybe say, I forgot I had to study today. I don't know, I'm gonna wanna go to this game or I wanna do this and you're not gonna follow through. So go to your calendar. I don't want you to be focusing on any other class. Like here is my studying for math from this time period to this time period. Because every day is different. You're gonna have obviously other courses, other exams, but if you don't write down that time period and that day, then guess what? Something's gonna come up. Your friends are gonna call you. There's gonna be an event. You're gonna push it to the end. And the last thing you want to do, oh yeah, crap, I forgot to go ahead and study. And then you're like at nine o'clock at night before you're supposed to go to bed. And you're like, oh crap, I got to go and do my study. And then it, you don't put in the full time and the effort into your study. So make sure you plan it out. The next thing is to prepare. Now, if you are not very organized or if you have not really properly studied for the rest of the year and you're starting to do this for an exam, then this could take some time. But what I want you to do for preparing is I want you to get out all of your notes, all of your homework, all of your quizzes, all of your tests, but organize them, take them all out because we're going to be pulling this stuff out. We're going to be using them. If you've created previous cheat sheets, then I want you to obviously take those cheat sheets. If you take credit cheat sheets, then I mean, you're already like my student, you're like hundred percent prepared. But a lot of times students, you know, will not create cheat sheets for certain tests or obviously for quizzes. I think it's a great idea to create cheat sheets throughout the year. But you know, as you're going through every single day, you know, in reality, I can understand it's a good study tool. And sometimes people just like to use it during this time. So at least one thing that on this day one, because planning really shouldn't take too long, finding all of your notes and your homework and your testing and quizzes shouldn't take too long. So what are you going to spend a lot of time doing? Well, I want you to go back through your notes. I want you to kind of take out the formulas, the definitions, all of those most important things. Depending on the time that you have and depending on how much time you have left, you can either start highlighting them, putting stars next to them, or if you do have more time to do, then start writing them down on a test cheat sheet or your exam cheat sheet, like whatever you're studying for in this time that I want you to start rewriting some of those formulas, some of those definitions, theorems, whatever rules that you feel like are the most important that you want to make sure that you ingrain. And students always ask, how do I memorize blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? If you go back through and review it, if you go back through and write them down, not saying that's automatically going to have you memorized for the test, but it's much easier for you to recall that information. I preferably like to have everything down to like one single sheet of paper, but depending if you're doing this for an exam or for just a single test, you might need multiple sheets of paper, but start rewriting some of those most important definitions and formulas. Day number two is going to be taking the test and the quizzes. So what I want you to do for day two on tests and quizzes, get all the tests, get all the quizzes, find the problems that you feel are like the most important. Your teacher can't put all of the problems that you've ever done on a test and quiz. So what you need to do is you just need to like identify what you feel is like the most important problems. Now, again, if it's like for an exam, you're looking at the test and the quizzes. If it's just a test, you're looking at the quizzes. And what I typically like for students to do, identify problems that you got right, but you feel like you're like, that was a really important problem in our notes. And like teacher talked about that quite a bit. Just look through all of that information and start either highlighting them, make sure that you have the answers. If for whatever reason you don't have like the written out answer, then try to go back and like redo the problem or pull up the answer on online. Like whatever may be the case, you got to make sure you have the answers for that because that's going to be something that is really important that we're going to get to and trying to see if there's like maybe some patterns of your mistakes or maybe there's some patterns within all of those problems because what you want to do is you want to connect with your brain the type of questioning that your uh, teacher or professor has been provided on those assessments because obviously guess what their test their eventual the test or quiz that you're studying for them is going to be kind of like related to what you've already taken then the next thing we're going to do is go through all of your homework assignments as well as your notes that you have typically when your teacher like gives notes they a lot of times will go through examples and obviously that is great feedback again to remember like these are some problems that the teacher thought were so important for you to know that they showed you how to do them step by step. So go back and review them, put star or highlight them. One thing I always do a lot of times would be like, Hey guys, this would be a great test question. And it was like, it's a very, very important problem. And I just try to emphasize with kids. So maybe your teacher was doing something you know, similar to that. Like when you're going through your notes, when you're going through your homework, right? Identify like the top 10%. You're like, these are the most important. Either I know how to do them at the time, or I forgot how to do them. Rewrite them, the problem and all the work down on your test. That's just day three. We've just really haven't done a lot of work yet. So guess what day four is? You got to start doing stuff. I put a poll on my YouTube channel. And I said, what do you guys do to study? And like so far, the most popular thing is like just do practice problems, which is great. But you got to make sure you are intentional with which problems you're doing. I just don't want you to do the review the teacher said. That's a lot of time is not going to be enough context or review for you to be prepared for an exam or a test. So just don't
don't rely on just doing practice problems. Notice I spent three days of collecting and aggregating all the types of problems and reviewing what you needed before we actually start doing practice problems. Now I agree with you, you need to do practice problems, but it's not the only thing. And also just doing problems, I want you to make sure that you are doing them intentionally. So going through all of the problems, try to spend as much time doing that review. Or if you don't have a review, trying to find like some additional problems online or another teacher's review or something that can give you some practice problems that you've never seen before. Be careful with something online. We want to make sure it's in line with what you're learning in your class. But I want you to try to do some problems like that you've never seen before. And preferably like a great one to do is like, I used to give this to my students. I'd give them a review and I'd give them a mock exam or a mock test. This is a great time to be able to kind of do that. Day five can creep in from day four. But for day five, what I want to do is go back to those tests and the quizzes. We took the top 10% of all the problems on our tests and quizzes and we put them down on our cheat sheet. But what I want you to do is start going through and actually doing the problems. So if you have like your test, take a sheet of paper, hopefully like a thick sheet of paper and cover up the actual work that you did. Then try to actually redo that problem again. And I don't care if you got that problem right before. Um, especially if you got the problem wrong, try to go through it again. You've already looked at the answer. You already reviewed it before. If it's a top 10% problem, you've already reviewed it and rewritten it down. So those you probably don't need to do as much. But for the problem that you just put a star or you just highlighted, try to do it again. So many times people were like, oh, I already know how to do that. So I'm not going to do that again. Well, guess what happens? Then the test or the exam shows up and they're like, oh crap, I forgot how to do it. Treat your brain like a muscle. Go back through the motions and redo those problems. Cover up the answers and try to do them again. The greatest thing about this, like on tests and quizzes, is you already have the answers. Remove your work from it and check what it is. If you got it wrong, which has happened, I did it before, then guess what? Throw away that sheet of paper, get another sheet of paper, cover up your work and do it again. Learning math sometimes guys can be hard. So don't feel bad if sometimes you have to do a problem two or three times before you get it correct. Even if you got it right on a test previously or a quiz previously, it happens guys. Learning is a journey. It's not just like a switch that comes on and off and then you're like, okay, I'm done. That's like, I did this problem right. So now I know how to do it. So now we're going into day six. On day six, we're going to do the exact same thing as day five, but rather than focusing on the test and the quiz questions, what I want you to do is focus on those homework questions as well as the review questions. We already took the top 10% and we put those on our cheat sheet. The rather like 15%, you should aim for like 25% of the questions. I remember we didn't get a lot of answers. So sometimes I even did them from problems in the book. So I would go through math book. We'll have like test, you know, questions and I'll show like the example. I used to get a sheet of paper and just cover up those example problems. And actually I tried doing them there because I didn't have a lot of resources sometimes and for some classes. So I even did that. And you can do that too, like with online classes or with online material, just make sure that it's in line with what you are learning or what your tester um, exam is going to be on. If you have some more extra time, don't be like, all right, cool. I just did all those. It took me like 10, 15 minutes. No guys, focus on at least an hour. If you only have seven days, put in at least an hour for each and every one of those seven days. Now day seven is very, very important because day seven, I really don't want you lifting up a pencil, trying to do more math problems. If you did this correctly, day two, three, four, five, and six should cover plenty enough math problems. And if not, then you didn't spend enough time on day two through six. Again, an hour should be minimum and you should be looking between an hour and three hours. I like to set between an hour and a half. So make sure you're doing those practice problems because on that last day seven, all I want you to do is just review. Just, I want you to relax. I don't want you to drink caffeine. I don't want you to drink that is bad for you. I want you to try to eat as healthy as food as possible. I want you to be calm because guess what? The night before a test, what happens? You have the stress, you have the anxiety. But if you have followed this step-by-step -step guide, you're also gonna have some confidence because you're gonna realize that you have done each and everything possible that you are capable of to be prepared for that test. And guess what? That is the absolute best feeling that you can have walking in to taking your test. Being like, you know, just looking around, looking at you, I'm like, yep, I'm ready and prepared. And you might not be fully ready and prepared, but you're as ready and prepared as you possibly can be. It's a great feeling. And that's what I want you to strive for. But I don't want you to be like, oh crap, I drank so much caffeine or so much coffee. I can't fall back asleep. I have been there before, right? I, a lot of times I used to study at the coffee shop. I love my coffee shops, but that was sometimes not a great place because I would just drink caffeine and then I couldn't fall asleep. And then I was sleeping deprived and I was taking the test and I was not in the ideal situation. Calm yourself down as much as possible. Take out the review sheet. Take out all the work that you've done. Just review it. You shouldn't need to have to do any more practice problems. You should have a ton of work to just go ahead and review, relax and start feeling prepared and confident and getting those thoughts in your head that you are going to do great. Because guess what? You need to have some confidence because I want you to absolutely destroy your test and exam.